from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, and also 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who hears with them listen. Hear then the parables of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we have this wonderful morning to come to you and worship. We pray that you would break open our hearts and our ears and that the words that are about to be spoken be your words for your people that bring us into a better relationship with you and a better understanding of what it means to be in service and to follow your son. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. So last week we started a brand new sermon series on the brand new year looking at what it meant to be a part of God's harvest. And last week, we talked about how uh, we're supposed to live in a world that Jesus himself defined as a plentiful land for harvest, a plentiful harvest here on this field, in this land. Our job as fellow Christians, as followers of him, is to work the soil and be the field hands that go out and help bring in the harvest. When we spoke last week, we talked a lot about John the Baptist and his ministry and how he was able to prepare all the people in, in and around Jerusalem and around Israel, in all fairness, to understand who was coming after him. We saw that John utilized not only his ragged and quite weird appearance to bring people to the riverbanks, but as soon as he got them there, he gave them a message that they had never heard before something that grabbed their attention and changed their hearts, ultimately ending with the idea that he would baptize a lot of them in the River Jordan so they might be prepared and ready for when the one who would come after him came. Of course, we know the end of the story that this is also where Jesus would begin his ministry. He would come to John. And just like Peter did at the upper, in the upper room at the, at the Last Supper, who, when Peter said, do not wash my feet, because I am not worthy to be washed feet of, John says the same thing. I don't need to baptize you. You should baptize me. And yet Jesus tells him, as he told Peter, we do what God has required of us. I need you to baptize me so that I may start my ministry and start my path towards the cross and the salvation that will be brought to the entire human race. And so we see that in John's ministry, this idea of preparation is there. John prepares the fields by just preaching the message. He didn't baptize every person that came to the River Jordan. But they were prepared by the sense that they had heard the message. 
But he did baptize a number of people, and they were the ones that were ready and willing when Jesus showed up on the scene to follow him and to listen to his words and his teachings. We spoke about for us in the modern day, the field must be prepared, but we too must be prepared because the work that is going to be demanded of us by the master of the field is going to be difficult. And we need to be prepared to be the field hands. And I hope that for those of you that were here last Sunday, you continued to pray the Wesleyan prayer that we prayed together. If you weren't here last Sunday, you can uh, find it on our website or on Facebook. I'll post it up and you can read through it. And I hope that you pray it with us as well. It's a hard prayer to pray, but it's one that if we pray earnestly with it, we will become the right field hands to be out in the field to make the harvest. But that prayer brings us into what we're going to talk about today. Because throughout the prayer, you remember that it says, we want God to make us, let us have everything or have nothing. To work for Him or to remain at rest for Him. Whatever it is that He needs from us, from whatever side of the spectrum, we ask that He does it for us and make us understand that we are doing it for His glory. Today... We continue the, par the, the imagery of farming, as you can see from this screen. Harvest, grain, fa farm, farmland. We're still talking about farming. Today, we're talking about the next step. The parable of the sower is probably one of the greatest parables that Jesus ever teaches. It's one of the most well-known. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that of all of the parables that Jesus gives, the sower is the one that Jesus actually explains. He gives the explanation and definitions of what each of the things in the parables are. At the end of every parable, you hear the same thing, and you heard Linda say it. Those with ears hear. Essentially, Jesus is saying, those of you that God has prepared to hear this message, you will understand what I'm talking about. For everyone else, you won't. But this particular case, Jesus decides, I need you to understand this parable. I'm going to explain it in simpler terms. And I'm going to explain all the pieces. Jesus ultimately goes in and tells us that the seed itself is the Word of God. And then He tells us what each of the soils represent as people that receive the Word. And so what does this parable mean to us in the modern church as we look upon a brand new year of ministry together? You know, one of the things that I love doing when I'm reading the scriptures is uh, one of my professors used to call it reading between the lines. Um, when I read the scriptures, I like to put myself inside the scriptures, trying to figure out what, what was going on at that moment, uh, maybe how the, how the crowd was reacting to him or how Jesus was reacting to, to others. And in this particular story, I have to admit that I enjoy putting myself into the crowd and looking around the crowd and seeing exactly what they were looking at and what they were hearing, and what their facial expressions must have been when they heard this parable being spoken by Jesus. Because if you think about this parable, you realize that there's something drastically wrong with what's going on in this parable. No farmer in his right mind throws his seed just anywhere. And yet Jesus' parable has the sower throwing seed onto the, onto the road, onto the rocky soil, on, into a soil that's completely filled with weeds and, and other destru destructive forces. And then some of them have been landed into good soil. Any farmer, even those of us that don't live on a farm, we probably should understand that seeds are the lifeblood of any farmer. You don't put your seeds in the ground, you don't have a crop. If you're going to feed your family and take care of your land and take care of what you need to take care of, you, those seeds are precious. What farmer in his right mind throws seed just anywhere? And I can only imagine that the crowd is just staring at Jesus going, what are you thinking? They probably missed the entire rest of the parable because they're thinking about this idiotic farmer who's throwing seed just anywhere he wants. And so I can only imagine that this is one of the reasons why Jesus decides, I've got to explain this one. 
because they're not getting it. They're focusing on this piece up at the front and not focusing on the real reason for the parable. So I've got to explain, I've got to explain what, what's going on. Now, what I find very interesting about this parable is that this parable doesn't make any sense until after the resurrection. Even after Jesus explains what all the pieces are, I can, only, I can almost guarantee you that even the disciples still had a hard time understanding what this parable was really trying to talk about until the resurrection. And y'all remember, I've preached on it at least once here, and I'm sure each and every one of you know what happens right after the resurrection. We have what is called the Great Commission. And what does Jesus tell the disciples? Go and make disciples of all nations. Spread the word to all people. Throw the seed. This, the parable of the sower doesn't come to realization until after the resurrection when Jesus sends forth the disciples into the world and says, go everywhere. Go to the rocky soil. Go to the fertile soil. Go to the soil that's filled with weeds. Walk along the path and throw the seed of God wherever you go. You know, we as pastors, we have a number of stories that tend to kind of cycle around. So I don't even know where I, who, who was the person that actually gave this, this particular story to me. But I love this story about the parable of the sower. There's a uh, local pastor that had a calling to plant a church in a brand new community. So he went to the, to the community, he found a building to use for certain Sunday worship. He went out and invited people in the community, went door to door to neighbors and, and people at the local coffee house and everything else. And he did everything he could to plant a brand new faith community here. And some Sundays he had a small congregation that came and worshiped. And some weeks there, were no, there was no one except for his wife and his kids. But every Sunday he would get up into, into the pulpit and he would read the scripture and he would preach his sermon. A little while later, uh, one of the men from the co conference went to him and said, why do you continue to preach to an empty room? And the, man, the pastor looked at him and said, well, God gave me a job to preach his word. He didn't tell me how many people had to be in the pews to hear it. All that matters is that I have the faith to speak up. I sow the seed, he reaps the harvest. Now, personally, I'm not sure if the pastor is a saint or a basket case, but at some point, there's a really fine line between the two. Because to speak of a real saint, St. Francis was known to preach to the birds. And he would, of course, allow them to eat the seeds. He said, why shouldn't they be fed too? The pastor in the story understood that it's not our job to figure out who has the right kind of soil. Honestly speaking, we'd be horrible at that, wouldn't we? We can't see into someone's heart. We can't see into their lives. We don't know what brought them to where they were at that moment. We couldn't f be even close to understanding what good soil was. How many times have we thought that we were good soil if only to find out that we were infested with some weeds? Our job is to spread the word wherever we go. The word of God is the seed that we are sowing and unlike a traditional farmer, we have more seeds than we could possibly throw out. Now, I've been a lot of different places. I've seen rocky terrain. I've seen plains. I've seen deserts. Anyone that's ever wandered around, you've seen steep cliffs that are all jagged and rocky, and then you see this random tree that pops out of it. Have you seen that before, that, that big tree that's in the middle of a rock? And you wonder how the heck it got there. You see, when I see things like that, I think... That tree is why God tells us to throw the seeds wherever. Because no one would have said a tree could have grown in that spot. 
And yet it did. It found a way. We're not supposed to throw our seed on just good soil. We're supposed to throw it wherever we go. Because there's no telling how great of an impact that seed will have in that area. And the fact of the matter is, is that were any of us truly ready for the word when the seed was planted within us? We're just called to preach the word. Another story is a, is a pastor walking down the road, a country road, and he sees a young man who is struggling to load his cart back with hay that had fallen in the middle of the road. Massive clump of hay in the middle of the road, and he's struggling to put it back on the cart. The pastor comes up and he says, he says, my son, you are incredibly hot. You've been out here for a long time the sweat on your brow, you have been working really hard. Why don't you take a break, get some water, and I will help you with this task. The young man looks at him. He says, thank you, preacher, but I need to keep working. I can't stop. My father would not appreciate if I stopped working. The pastor looks at him and says, don't be silly. It's over 100 degrees outside. No shade. You are burning up. You have got to take a rest. Everyone is entitled to a break. Come and have a drink of water. And again, the young man looks at the pastor, the preacher and says, I'm sorry, preacher, but I can't stop. My father would be livid with me if I stopped. And the pastor looks at him and says, I don't understand your father. He must be some kind of a slave driver. Tell me where I can find him and I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. The young man says, well, the cart tipped over on him. He's under the hay. <laughs> You know, we can't just look for the people that have good soil, can we? We'd miss so many opportunities to spread the word of God, wouldn't we? If we were only looking for that one person to give the, you know, and I I hear this all the time, and I I can say I'm just as guilty as the next person is. We're we're looking for that opportunity to, to preach the word, that opportunity to interject Jesus into a conversation or into a relationship. And it's almost as if we're waiting for the clouds to open up, a beam of sunlight to come streaming down and angels to show up and go, this is it, this is it, this is it. But that's not how it works. (laughs) Every once in a while we get that experience and and, and we're able to say that. But nine times out of ten, you're not going to find that experience. And yet, there are so many people that are in the church and in here or in other churches, in other faith, faiths that have the same story. That at some random conversation with a member of the church, they heard the message of Christ. They heard about the love of a God who gave His Son for them. And they were changed. Now, it may have taken a year or 20 years after that seed was planted. But they can look back to one one time, and it wasn't anything special. It wasn't this miraculous time in their lives. It was just a mundane conversation, an invitation to church on Sunday morning, a request to pray for, just a kind word of, standing with someone. This morning, we saw another example of it, didn't we? It's beautiful to baptize a small child, isn't it? To welcome them into the faith. But let me ask you a question. As cute as little Harper really is, second cutest baby, sorry, I have to be, I I have to be biased. (laughs) As cute as she is, do you think she's ready to receive the word of God? Probably not right this moment. She's not old enough. As I asked the kids down here, she won't remember what happened this morning. She'll rely on us to tell her. And at some point in time, the seed that we planted this morning hopefully will grow and produce fruit. 
But just because she can't produce fruit right this second doesn't stop us from planting the seed, does it? It certainly didn't stop me from watering her. You know, this is where we get the, se- the parable of the sower. Throw the seed wherever it goes and pray that it catches root. Maybe the soil that you think is filled with weeds is actually very fertile. Maybe the rock that's underneath the soil that you think is too impregnable to allow roots to set down may turn into that tree that's on the mountain. Of course, we as the field hands, as the sowers, are required to till up the ground and hopefully throw the seed as, on as fertile ground as we possibly can find, which requires us to get to know people, to build relationships, to invite people to the events of the church, to invite them to Sunday school, to invite them to all sorts of things, to build that one-on-one relationship so that we can not only plant the seed, but we can help nurture the seed that's within But the seed that is given to us, while certainly is one of the most precious things that we have, is also something that we can never lose. We always have more. The bag is always filled with seeds to throw. So when we look only for the fertile soil, we miss the people who aren't quite there yet. And here's the big secret of the whole thing of the sower. And it's really not a massive secret. The rocky soil, the soil filled with weeds, even the road itself, they all still need the word of God. In all fairness, they probably need it more so than the fertile ground. But if we only focus on what we can see, we miss the desperate need of the one who is not. The pastor was certainly doing his job trying to love and take care of a young man on the road. What he failed to acknowledge was the one he couldn't see. The one whom he was actually harming a lot by only focusing on one. And that's why Jesus tells us in the parable of the sower, throw the seed everywhere. Don't care where it lands. Throw it. Because you never know when that seed will overcome the weeds that are in the dirt. So my question to you all this morning as we prepare ourselves for the harvest that is here in Needville, I promise. Are you ready to throw your seeds? To throw them everywhere? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the parable of the sower is such a difficult parable for us. We so desire to make sure that each time we profess the word, that it does exactly what it's supposed to do. But you, Father, have challenged us and charged us to throw the seed of your word to wherever we go, no matter what kind of soil we may find around us. Help us to continue to do this. Help us to seek out opportunity after opportunity to throw your seed that we might build your field, that we might plant more seeds and that the fruit of your harvest is just as plentiful as you as promised. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.